Matthew Holt, who are my old friend Nick Augustinus, who uh, from way back when in healthcare, uh, has been at WebMD, Cisco for many years, Cardinal Health more recently, but sort of nosing around the whole informatics and, uh, and, and new health technology space, and is now the new CEO of a company called uh, Arva. Did I get it right? It's Arva, not Ava. Right. It's right, Arva, right. not Ava. All right, so uh, Nick, you just jumped from Cardinal, came on board on, on Arva fairly recently, and you guys just uh, raised a, a big Series B. So. First off, tell us about the money, and then we'll talk about what, what, what you did. So the money, we raised uh, $13.6 million uh, on our Series B. It was around led by Heritage. Uh, we have some of the existing investors that came back into, uh, into this round. Uh, how much was the first round? The first round was six and a half. So about 20-odd million in, yeah. in total, and credit. That's correct. And w when was the company founded? The company was founded in 2010, so it had a, a seed round and, uh, and a, a double A round and then the A round and, uh, no, and, now, no, and now, no, now the B. The That's B almost round. a proper B, although it's like half some of the A's we see these days anyway. But yeah. anyway. So, so let's get into the, the, the guts of it. What's the, uh, what's the core technology and, and then how is it being aimed? So the core technology, where, where the company started, it started uh, with informatics and basically it started in its ability to ingest huge amounts of data and run analysis on historic claims and give insights to people around their claims, their expenditures. And the, 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 the premise of it is a, a, an engine that very quickly manipulates data with a very smooth, very smooth and very intuitive uh, graphical interface that in the background converts the graphical interface that is sort of almost like a logical flow into uh, the analysis that happens and the reports that get generated from, from our engine. And as we, as we uh, have taken this to market, we, we identified an opportunity in, uh, with uh, the movement towards fee-for-value and a lot of our customers looking to move into fee-for-value uh, arrangements and contracts, that there is an opportunity to use the same engine and repurpose it uh, to create uh, episodes and to start managing around episodes of care. So this is basically around the sort of the idea of now CMS and others are starting to move towards bundle payments, and you bundle figure payments. out when someone is going to the hospital, Correct. and then you have to put a whole bunch of stuff together that wasn't put Correct. together before, right? So, so this 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 graphical interface allows us to create these bundles, and to to we use this sort of similar sort of stack, if you want, to create these bundles, and to provide the ability for people to manage those bundles and see almost near real time where the spend is, where where the patient is, how the patients flow through the system. And I think that was an important uh, breakthrough. And the whole idea here is to align, uh, to align the activity with, uh, with uh, quality of outcomes and, of course, the financial incentives that, uh, that are intended to be. So does the tool somehow direct the dollars then? So if I, you know, if you're moving, I'm, I'm making this up, but if you're doing hip replacements and you manage to, to, to and you want to see more done in physical therapy and less done in, you know, Readmission papers. I don't know what I'm right, saying right. here, but does the tools that are. Oh, we know that. We know that. Well, we know that, right? Hang <laughs> <laughs> on. So, yeah, you've been around a little bit too this, long. This is, a, this, is about Ava. <laughs> this is about Ava, but uh, not about my, my knowledge levels about hip replacements or anything else for that matter. I'll, I'll have you know. Um, anyway, but the, uh, the, the idea would be that you could then direct it, direct more money and more. Um, more services to you know to one area of the of the budget. Yeah, and right? I think the idea is to, to do it in a, in a meaningful way, where we with quality in mind and patient outcome in mind. So the idea is how you you actually apply the resources where the resources need to be applied, as opposed to just doing financial manipulation. So I think the insights that you get out of the historic views allow you to see how you have the spend and how you need to uh, reapportion, if you want the the. the you know, take a bundle of some of the resources to enhance certain services or to increase the level of certain services or whatnot. So I think this is kind of a, it's, it's the two of them go hand in hand if you want, the ability to, to uh, look retrospectively and see what, what has been done and how people behave given a system, given an organization, given an integrated delivery network, given a loosely affiliated network. And, and then apply that knowledge towards uh, logical, uh, flow, uh, logical fund disbursement. 
And then on the customer side, I think you mentioned uh, off camera that, that, that the original um, set of technologies have been used at uh, both plants like uh, Blues North Carolina, but also big systems like UPMC. Who do you see being the sort of, you know, now you're on board, now you're taking the money, and those VCs will want their money back at some point. Who do you think the uh, logical, where do you think the logical growth comes in terms of who's going to be taking this kind of tool on, who's going to be the users, and, and therefore where do you see your, right. your market going? So, so, um, so as you can imagine, a tool like this can, can deliver value both for payers who are negotiating contracts around in some sort of bundle or some sort of fee-for-value and are trying to move the system towards a fee-for-value. So they, they're, they want to do it from a point of rational, sort of a, uh, rational reimbursement and rational behavior. And of course, from a payer perspective, anybody who is assuming some form of risk or some form of... Uh, um, some form of risk for a certain type of population or a certain type of patient. So, so it's actually, it's almost a microcosm, if you want, of population health where it comes down to the individual and you manage basically the risk along sort of the path of, uh, that an individual takes along the path towards a better health. So anybody, any, any system, any, any sort of aggregation, if you want, of risk that happens at the provider level and anybody who is associated with that and affiliated with that would be sort of a, a good candidate for us. So anybody who aggregates any form of life, uh, lives in order to deliver care, effective care, and wants to incent the entire continuum of care to behave in a rational way is... Uh, so, so basically any, any, any plan, any ACO, and probably any, any provider that's doing, you know, Significant bundle you'll follow. We can offer. The we can, stuff. There's value. There's a value proposition both for the payers as well as the providers of care. Let's yeah, put it that yeah. way. All right, and then last question. You spend a lot of time at Cisco, wandering around the world, not just wandering around the U.S. Does, yeah. does this um, this sounds pretty U.S. focused for now? Does it have an international application, or to be decided? Um, I, right now, we're focused in the U.S., being an early stage company, but uh, or a mid stage company. But uh, I think uh, eventually, I think there's no there's no country in the world that's not trying to improve the care and contain the cost of care. And actually, in some markets, uh, it it is it might be especially in markets that there is some sort of national delivery system or national uh, national health system. I think some of these value propositions are much more obvious because the numbers roll up much faster. <laughs> right. So I think there is a, there's an argument to be made there, but now at this stage of the, of the game, we're focusing on the US. Cool. I've been talking with Nick Augustinus. He's the CEO of Ava, a relatively new uh, startup in the data analytics and bundle payment and uh, risk. You've just heard of it, risk space. Uh, Nick, thanks for your time. Look forward to seeing how that develops. Thank you.